2018 marked the 22nd year of the South African Women's Arts Festival and the Playhouse Theatre in Durban hosted a fascinating series of productions, performances, concerts and exhibitions. One of these was Womb of Fire, which explored the effects of colonialism on the historical and contemporary realities, with the Mahabharata as an allegorical backdrop. Karusha visited the theatre to find out more about the festival and the production. Entertainment may be theatre's primary purpose, but it can also make the audience think, which was definitely the intention of the Women's Month productions at the Playhouse. For Women's Month, the Durban Playhouse commemorated South African women in all aspects of life. One of the plays not to have been missed is Womb of Fire, a remarkable piece of work created by Dr. Sarah Mashet and Rihanna Abrams. Rehane plays all three roles in this one-woman play, which interweaves the tale of Draupadi as told in the Mahabharata with the stories of two real figures in the early history of the Cape Colony. One of these was a coy woman, Zara, while the other was an exiled slave, Catherine. Civilized burgers, carefully taught the Dutch language. The work is a product of a long-term collaboration between Rehane and Sarah Matchett, who directed the production. Sarah, welcome to Mela. Thank you. How would you describe the drive behind the emotion of Womb of Fire? The process of creating Womb of Fire involved numerous techniques and practices, and one of them is the system of rasa. So rasa being essence, sensation, which is associated with Sanskrit performance, an over 2,000-year-old system. The system explores the triadic relationship between breath, posture, and facial expression to evoke the rasa firstly in the body of the performer, but ultimately to evoke the rasa in the body of the audience. How did you and Rihanna meet? We were at university together. We've done kind of seminal things in our lives together, and one of them being the formation of the Mother Tongue Project. As a woman South African director in the arts, what is your advice for any other woman particularly a woman of colour, wanting to get into the arts as a director. We need more women, and particularly black women directors, in the arts in South Africa. And particularly we need women's voices to speak to the high levels of gender violence, to rape culture in this country of ours. We need women to be writing about this, performing about this, and directing. The piece does explore the theme of violence against women, which is a big issue in our country. Why was it important for you to speak about this? The piece exposes the violation and the violence and affects the audience members where the aesthetic becomes the agitator for change. Theatre must touch people, theatre must move people so that they feel they need to actually do something about it. Rihanna, welcome to Mela. Thank you. A one-woman play, there must be an enormous amount of preparation involved. It's physically very demanding on my body, but it has made me very much stronger, the process of the play. I've become stronger in so many ways. You play three different women. How are you able to tap into each of them and transition from one to another? I place the characters in physical centers. So the one character, she's very mental and I place her in my head. And so she's very in her head and she's very excited and she thinks a lot. And the other character is very warm and soft and she falls in love easily. So I place her in my heart. And the other character is kind of sexually aggressive and fighting for survival and I place her in my will center. So I move them through my body and naturally with the work that we've done, I just find them in the moment. Why is it so important for you to tell these stories? One of the first starting points was a conversation I had with my mother. She felt that her koi history had been erased. Her own mother wouldn't admit to having koi ancestry because of the shame involved in that. And she's got a great-grandmother also from Tamil Nadu. 
So I wanted to look at those two streams and bring them out into the open to highlight the histories of these very real women and how they lived and to begin to repopulate the streets of Cape Town with these characters. Garlands the winner. Scent of blossoms around the front door. Rambling rose and honeysuckle. Over the fallen fish oil chip roll stink slick on the water with the arrow still upright in its open fish eye. And just like that, she is married. And willingly, according to custom, she follows the groom and his four brothers to the humble husband home. This being the 22nd anniversary of the South African Women's Arts Festival, I have the privilege of chatting to CEO and Artistic Director of Durban's Playhouse, Ms. Linda Bukusini. Ms. Bukusini, welcome to Mela. Thank you for having us. What is your artistic vision for the Playhouse? The artistic vision of the Playhouse company is to present as wide a variety of artistic works of cultural activities that represent the, the country. How did Womb of Fire make the selection list for this year's Women in the Arts Festival? This production touches a lot of things that are important to us as South Africans today. And it was found to be a worthy story of South African history to be told today. It's very well put together. It's garnered a lot of good critical reviews and uh, the audiences are appreciating as well. What are your hopes and dreams for arts in South Africa? I'm really hoping, I'm wishing for, I'm desiring the private sector to put money into the arts. There are worthy programs here that they can support. Words rise up out of my palms like stars in the night sky through a hole in the litter. I am stars rising. For too long, women have been exiles in their own land, and now they're claiming their rightful space in the world. 